Hello listeners. Today we have another interview in our mental health and entrepreneurship series. And I am so excited to have this guest today. We are going to dive into EFT. Another name for that is tapping. And it's something that I actually reference in my book as a means to help with managing symptoms of anxiety and overcoming anxiety and Tapping actually can be used for a plethora of things. It doesn't have to just be anxiety. It's, it's really tapping into your, your energy levels and that, that energy within us to help us overcome different blocks we have and, and things like that. But I'm not going to keep elaborating on this because I have an expert here to talk about it. So why would I waste my time? But I do want to tell you a funny little story about how I met today's guest. So Carrie V has a podcast called coffee and tea with Carrie V and Carrie had reached out to me to be a guest on her show. This was through Facebook messenger. I'd never met Carrie before, but I was like, Oh, I'm going to listen to her show and, and see what she's all about. Delightful show. Loved it. Cannot wait to be interviewed by her, but I'm listening. And Dr. Katie Nall was her guest. And at the very end of the interview, Dr. Katie says, well, I would like to invite your guests to call me. And here is my phone number. She goes, most of them will not call me, but anyway, I like to put this out there as a challenge. Well, guess who took that challenge? It was a Friday afternoon and I call or a Saturday. I don't even know. I think it was a Friday afternoon. I called Dr. Katie. (laughs) I left her a voicemail and about a week later, she called me back. So anyway, just, I love that story. I think there is so often, um, we, hold ourselves back and we don't do things like that out of fear of judgment or fear of rejection. And I was like, Hey, this is a challenge. I'm taking it and look where we are today. So I cannot wait to bring her to you, her expertise to you and her personality to you. So here we go. Dr. Katie. Now, welcome to the second phase podcast. Thank you so much, Dr. Graham. It is an honor and I can't tell you how happy I am that you are doing this for everyone because you know you what you're doing in the world is going to have such a ripple effect to so many different people. So thank you for hosting this podcast. I know how much work this is. So bravo to you. Oh, um, thank you, Katie. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, yeah, I'm just up the road from one of the places that Robin uh, hangs out and um, I'm a mathematician. And so when you talk about anxiety, a lot of people say, oh yeah, math. (laughs) And that's exactly how I got started. I'm a late in life bloomer. Uh, I was in my mid fifties when I went back to school full time to earn my PhD in math education. I was working full time at a college at the time and I thought, I need a PhD and, you know, math is so much fun. Let's do that. (laughs) Took me four years, Robin, to earn my PhD in mathematics education while I was working full time. In that process, I wanted to help the students that I saw at the college that would come in and say, I only need one more class to graduate. I said, great, let's get you going. Let's sign you up for the class. Let's go. And they would kind of bow their heads down and their shoulders would droop and they kind of mutter and say, well, it's a math class. And I'm like, fabulous. You say the best for last. Let's get you registered and going. Well, they seldom had my enthusiasm. I'm feeling their pain. And and now my daughter is in geometry and she's always done so good, but we're in the throes of not a good experience with geometry. And she said to me the other day, mom, it's really a shame. I didn't get dad's math genes and I got yours. I'm like, yeah, it is a shame. (laughs) Well, I used to run a Kumon franchise. And so I, I saw students from two years to adult from developmentally delayed to gifted. And I saw everyone increase their math skills using processes. So I know that everybody can. Yes. Yes. I wanted to help these students and Robin, they all had, they came up and I would, I would just start talking to them. I'm like, what's the problem? Where, where, where's the issue? And after talking to a lot of students, I found out there were two problems. Somebody at some point told them they weren't good at math and, or somebody told them math is difficult. Well, now I don't believe either one of those. So some students I could talk out of it and we could reflect and, you know, do those, uh, 
prefrontal cortex, cognitive thinking kind of stuff. But so many students were literally traumatized by their math experiences that I couldn't even get them to sign up for the class. I wanted these students to be able to continue on, to get on with their lives, to, to move forward, right? And I didn't know how to do it. So I started to search for how do you overcome fear and anxiety in math and tests? And I found nothing. There was nothing out there. There were lots of articles on how to help students um, uh, get, study differently. Um, they should change their time, change their teachers, join a study group. But we were talking to people who couldn't even register for the class without breaking down. I thought, no, there's got to be something else. Well, luckily, I recognize this as a word problem. And in a word problem, you take out what you don't need. And what I was really looking for is how do you overcome fear and anxiety? That was in 2010. And I found Nick Ortner's 10 day tapping summit. And I would highly encourage all your listeners to, to go find it. He does it once a year and he covers all kinds of different aspects about tapping. I listened all 10 days and tapping is a form of energy psychology that is meant to help people overcome all kinds of different issues. Nobody in that 10 day summit, Robin, talked about math or test anxiety. So I had no idea if this is gonna work. I bought the book, I bought the DVD. I'm like, hey, these kids are desperate. They're gonna try anything. <laughs> so I taught myself, they would come in one by one and we'd tap. And if you're up for it, we can actually do a tapping session in, uh, during the podcast. Sure. Um, yeah. And they would come back slowly and say, I, I, I think I passed my math class. <laughs> and I don't know who was more surprised, them or me. I was like, you did? Really? This stuff might work? <laughs> because once I figured out it might work, I thought, boy, I don't know what I'm doing. I better get trained. So I went back and I got training in level one, level two, level three, trauma, which I strongly suggest. Quantum, which is past lives. I just did a past live with somebody yesterday. Very interesting. Um, and um, I actually wanted, when I first learned about it, all I wanted to do was teach it. I wanted everybody to know this amazing technology. So I wanted to be a trainer. Well, remember, it took me four years to earn my PhD working full-time. Took me eight years to get become a master trainer in tapping, working full-time. But now, I train others in it and I love it. I love you know it. what, Katie, I have to interrupt you for one second, because if there's anything at all that anybody can take away from this, it is that it is never too late. It's <laughs> never too late. I mean, you, you just told us that you four years in your fifties and then another eight years on top of that. I mean, that means you were in your sixties starting this brand new career. It's amazing. I love it. I had the opportunity to retire from the college this summer and in a couple of weeks, I will be um, 69 years old and I'm busier now than I was when I worked at the college um, because I'm, I'm doing, uh, I'm a pro professional speaker. I can speak. I'm a professional speaker. <laughs> uh, I do training and tapping. Uh, I teach Qigong and um, I run a mastermind. So yeah, it, life is fabulous. There's so many good things going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you it's know wonderful. Yeah. You know what they say, Robin, if you look out at nature, right, things are either decaying or growing. So if you're not growing, if you're not learning something new, guess what? You're decaying. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Um, in fact, I'm finishing up my latest certificate in um, picture tapping technique, which is very interesting. I, we were visiting my daughter and her family <laughs> the other day, and I said, I'm almost finished with, and she's like, don't tell me. <laughs> Said, yeah. She said, you have too many certificates. I said, well, no, there's really one more. I really want to go for. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Such an inspiration. And, and I think it shows that the sky's the limit. So, okay. So tell us a little bit more about tapping and what it is. We, I interviewed, um, Nicole Leno a while ago, her episode aired maybe even August, August, September. And she's not, she does EFT for herself. She's not actually doing it, you know, for other people or training people in it, but we were talking about feminine energy and masculine energy, and then, you know, using tapping, um, 
to remove those blocks. And she talked about how it's very similar to acupuncture where you're actually using it to remove any of those blocks, energy blocks that you have throughout your, your body. So tell us a little bit about how this works. I mean, energy is energy. And scientifically we know energy is at, in the core of everything. So obviously if there is an energy block, we're going to stumble. So what, how does this work to remove these energy blocks and, and help us? So I wish I could answer that question. Oh, okay. It's a mystery. <laughs> so we don't, we don't know how it works, but we have guesses. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, emotional freedom technique, which is called EFT or tapping was developed by, of all people, an electrical engineer. His name is Gary Craig, and he developed it in the 1990s and put everything out on the internet for free. So for your listeners who want to have more information, he's got books and videos and all kinds of stuff. It doesn't certify you to practice, but you can use it for yourself. It's helpful. What he did is he was watching psychologists and psychiatrists who were struggling to help clients overcome their their issues, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, The story goes, there was one particular um, client, they call her Mary, who had this insane fear of water to the point where she couldn't give her son a bath. And she was working with a psychiatrist uh, for weeks, for months, and they were getting nowhere, just nowhere. The psychiatrist got desperate. He had been studying traditional Chinese medicine and the idea of meridians, the 12 energy pathways that traditional Chinese medicine have defined uh, for centuries. And um, so he thought, well, we'll just try this and see if something happens. So he had the thought to ask Mary, when you think about water, where do you feel it in your body? And she said, my stomach gets upset just thinking about water. Knowing the meridians, he said, let's tap right under your eye because that's on your stomach meridian. Hmm. They tapped, they were finished. And depending on which story you want to believe, she grabbed a glass of water, drank the whole thing down, set it back down, said, thank you, I'm done. And walked out the door. He had no idea what happened. <laughs> she didn't care because she w- she was all okay. And so he started developing a series of, of different things. If you have fear, if you have anxiety, if you have, you know, isolation, whatever you have, and was selling them to other psychiatrists and psychologists. Now, these are people, as you well know, as a PhD, who spent thousands of dollars in their education. And now they're buying these kits. I'm telling you where to tap on your, on your body to do something in one session that people hadn't been able to do in weeks. Well, Gary Craig saw all this and he thought about the tra- traditional Chinese medicine and he saw them as electrical circuits. And as electrical circuits, he said, you know, if you tap on the top of your head or above your nose on the edge of your eyebrow or between your eye and your, and your hairline or under your eye or under your nose, under your lips or on your collarbone or about four inches under your arm, you're gonna hit 98% of those meridians. So he started um, playing around with this and was having great success giving talks and bringing people up on the stage who were terrified of giving talks, do a tapping session with them, and then couldn't get them off the stage. (laughs) He actually took the process to the Veterans Administration Hospital. Now, he started working with Vietnam veterans that had been hospitalized and drugged for 40 years. Mm. Worked with them for a week with tapping. And they were fine. That's when it really took off because it was approved by the Veterans Administration to use on veterans for PTSD, which is really interesting. It's Mm -hmm. very popular around the rest of the world. Um, In the United Kingdom, where they have um, a managed care by the government, Mm -hmm. the government's looking for ways to how can we fix things and not just patch them up. Tapping is huge over there. In fact, my certifications are with two or three different organizations out of the UK. Um, So they look for solutions. Um, And that's true. I've had clients from all over the world on all kinds of different issues. I have to tell you a funny story, Robin. When I first found out about tapping, I was so excited. I was like, this stuff works. This is like magic. I love this. So I go up to people that were nearly perfect strangers. I mean, I might know their name or the person with them. I'm like, what's your problem? Let me fix it. (laughs) And they're like, lady, get away. Just two steps back. (laughs) So I thought 
I stopped telling people about, I know tapping, I know tapping, because people always wanted to ask me to dance. And I'm like, no, I don't know tap dancing. <laughs> so I finally figured out that what I do is I help people dissolve their waffles, dissolve their worries, anxiety, fear, frustration, lethargy, exhaustion, and stress. My book that'll be coming out will have stories on the clients that have worked on every one of those issues. I love it. Waffles. That's perfect. And it really encompasses everything that we experience that is negative in our lives. Right. And mm -hmm. I'm curious. So is there a specific place we tap to relieve anxiety? Is there a specific place we tap to help us sleep better? Like what is there a, you know, like a space, like you mentioned so many of the different places to tap related to the meridians. Are there specific meridians or specific points on our body that affect one of those waffles or another? Um, so that's a great question. And as it turns out, it's not so much what the waffle is, but it's where the waffle is stored. Mm. So it has to do with um, when I work with my clients, obviously we have a discovery form so I can find out what their goals are and, and go from there. But from there, we ask, you know, what is your emotion that you're feeling uh, around a particular issue? Where is it stored in your body from the top of your head to the bottom of your toes? What is the intensity between zero and 10? And, um, and then there are other questions depending on what the issue is. So it has to do more about where we store it in our body. You've heard people say, oh, I've got a stress headache. Um, mm -hmm. I feel it in the back of my head. My neck and my shoulders are so tight. Mm -hmm. oh, my chest is just thumping so hard. I've got butterflies in my stomach. I've had clients who've had all of their negative energy in their elbow and also one in their little toe. So, <laughs> so it's right. actually tapping relieves it. And if you're up for it, we could do a session right now. Sure. Now, so I don't usually publish the video. So is it, does it, it still is fine, right? If yeah. we're just doing the audio. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Do audio. Okay. So um, are you ready? Sure. Let's go. I'm going to ask you a whole bunch of questions and um, there's no wrong answers. Um, and yeah, we just go from there. So can you think of an issue recently that you've had in like in the last 24, 48 hours that have caused you waffles, that have caused you worry, anxiety, fear, frustration, lethargy, exhaustion, or stress? Sure. I, yeah, I can think of a lot of things. <laughs> think of a little thing. Don't give me a big thing. So just, so I taught a masterclass yesterday. It was okay. just a free masterclass for my, for my, you know, followers, uh -huh. um, and audience and clients and whoever uh -huh. wanted to attend. So, but leading up to that, like public speaking has always been a big fear of mine that I have only in the past couple of years overcome. So, and I'm still not completely over it. So I would say that we could use that as a good, as a perfect example. Perfect. Perfect. So um, yesterday you did your masterclass and I'm assuming you did it from your office. Is that right? Yes. I did it on zoom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and when you think about uh, when you think about how you feel right now today about doing the masterclass yesterday in your office, what emotions coming up? Oh, I still get a little anxious. Thinking. Anxious. Did I okay. do it right? Did I, did I say everything I wanted to say? Did I help someone? Did someone take anything away from this that they can now apply to their business? Will anybody book a discovery call with me? Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. Anxious. Were there any other emotions or was anxious the strongest one? I would say anxious is, I mean, ha happy. I was joyful. I was happy. I was grateful, you know, when it was, when it was over and that I, I do believe it went really well, but, um, it's still those, I would say the anxiety probably is still higher than, okay. than, That's the, than all of that. Yeah. So I want you to think about doing your masterclass yesterday mm -hmm. and how you're feeling anxious now from the top of your body, all the way down to your toes. Where do you feel the anxiousness in your body? My belly, right at the top yeah. of my belly. Yep. Okay. And, um, from zero to 10, where zero is out, like, oh, no big deal. That was yesterday. We're all done. And 10 is the most anxious you've been in your entire life. What number would you give it? Mm, I'd say three. A three. Okay. And um, is this a true statement? Right here, right now, I feel safe. 
Yes, that's a true statement. Okay. For those who are listening, if that's not a true statement, another true statement is right here, right now, I accept the way I feel. It's important that everything um, we say, I'm going to give you some words to repeat, but it's important that everything is said is true for you, not for me. Um, so my last question is, if I ask you to repeat something and you go, oh, uh, that's not really true, or I'd say it in a different way, will you repeat it back in whatever words are comfortable for you? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Sure. We're ready to go. Uh, what we're going to do is first without words, just so we kind of have an idea of what we're doing, and then we'll add the words. Is that all right? Yep. Okay. So start on the side of your hand between your wrist and your little finger. And use your other hand and use four fingers of your other hand to tap on the side of your hand between your wrist and your little finger. Now, when we add words, Robin, we're going to be adding three sentences and they'll be all about yesterday. So you can kind of think about yesterday while we're tapping. And then when we go from there, the next spot is going to be on the crown of our head. And you can use one hand or the other or both. It doesn't matter. And you tap okay. right on the crown of your head. And then the next stop. I'm going to, I'm going to go in for a close up for you. The audio won't convey this, but your gasp might. Uh, I'm going to do a close up so you can make sure we get it. It's on the edge of above the nose on the edge of the eyebrow. Okay. Again, for the listening audience, you can use one hand or the other or both. It doesn't matter. And then our next spot is between the edge of the eye and the hairline. And again, you can use one hand or the other. It doesn't matter. So the side of your face doesn't matter. The side of your face, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then next spot is where I keep all my bags for a quick getaway and that's under our eyes. <laughs> I'm waiting for Kim Kardashian to start blacking under her eyes so I can be in fashion again. So <laughs> under, the, under the nose above the lips. And then your next spot is below the lips on the chin. And then with your pop, Palms facing your face, you're going to cross at your wrist and go on your collarbone and breathe. I have it on good authority that breathing is really a good idea to continue doing throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a little and bit. Our last, our last spot is about four inches under our arms. We're going to thump our ribs and give it a good thumping. Okay. That's good for your immune system too. Mm -hmm. And then blow out your air. Okay. Okay, now we're going to add words. So for those in the listening audience, um, if you want to, if you, if you're, as long as you're not driving, don't, don't be doing, don't tap while you're driving, but as long as you're not driving or you can listen to it later, um, I'm going to give the, where we're going to be tapping on our body again and the words. And even though you may not have uh, anxiety about public speaking in your belly, repeating this, you may feel an energy shift as well. So let's get started. On the side of the hand, we tap with one hand and we say, even though, even though, when I think about the masterclass yesterday, when I think about the masterclass yesterday, I still have some little bit of anxiety in my belly. I still have a little bit of anxiety in my belly right here, right now. I feel safe anyway, right here, right now. I feel safe anyway. We're going to repeat versions of that sentence two more times, even though, even though. I have some anxiety in my belly. I have some anxiety in my belly. Thinking about that masterclass yesterday. Thinking about that masterclass yesterday. Right here, right now, I feel safe anyway. Right here, right now, I feel safe anyway. Even though. Even though. My belly has a little bit of anxious in it. My belly has a little bit of anxious in it. Thinking about that masterclass yesterday. Thinking about that masterclass yesterday. Right here, right now, I feel safe anyway. Right here, right now, I feel safe anyway. Then move to the top of our head and tap and say, this anxiety in my belly. This anxiety in my belly. And on the edge of your eyebrow, over your nose, tap and say, this anxiety in my belly. This anxiety in my belly. On the side of the eye, between the eye and the hairline, this anxiety in my belly. This anxiety in my belly. Under the eye, this anxiety in my belly. This anxiety in my belly. Under the nose, this anxiety in my belly. This anxiety in my belly. Under the lips, this anxiety in my belly. This anxiety in my belly. And on the collarbone, this anxiety in my belly. This anxiety in my belly. Under your arm, this anxiety in my belly.
this anxiety in my belly. Blow all your air out. <laughs> so, Robin, when you think about your masterclass yesterday and your anxiety from zero to 10, where is it now? It's a zero. I don't feel my belly. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. I think I'm going to actually put this on YouTube. So when it airs, it's going to be on YouTube too. So people can actually see this. Great. Let me know. And I'll put it on my YouTube channel as well. Perfect. Absolutely. This yeah. is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good stuff. And um, I was talking to my sister this morning and uh, she said she was listening to a, a, an, another podcast and they were talking about how in our lives um, at our core, we are either happy or unhappy. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone knows we can't be happy all the time. We can't be unhappy all the time. So there are times around our lives where things change. And as she talked about it, I realized that we have a core feeling, let's say that we're happy and that every now and then some, something comes around that makes us unhappy. It may mm -hmm. get sad and may be depressed. We may have grief. We may have something going around. And as she talked about it, I envisioned a hula hoop mm. and that uh, at our core, whatever we are, let's say we're happy that at our core, we have a hula hoop that's going around. And this past year with COVID, that hula hoop shrunk and we had all of those emotions going through us all the time. And that our job is to increase our parasympathetic nervous system by stretching out that hula hoop so that we don't have those negative emotions as frequently as when the hula hoop is smaller. And I just love that analogy that um, as we widen our hula hoop so that yes, we have some sadness, yes, we have grief, yes, we get angry from time to time, but maybe it's not as frequently because we can widen it because we can learn how to eat our waffles so our waffles don't eat at us. <laughs> Love it. Love it. And I love the analogy of the hula hoop because it kind of brings you back to your inner child and how we were truly happy at our core when we were children. I and mean, we could be, you know, just free and blissful. And we didn't have all of these things bursting into our bubbles of happiness. So I love that analogy. That is great. That's great. And I think it's the first time you've shared that one, right? That is a brand new concept that I was able to share on your show first. And I have a, a talk in the next couple of days to some high school counselors who have um, compassion fatigue, right? Mm, that they've yeah. been working with their students and the students are still trying to get things straightened out. Um, and so I'll be sharing uh, that concept with them. So thank you for letting me introduce it on your show. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. So I, I absolutely love this whole concept of waffles and how you summarize all of the things that happen in our lives in one little word, um, that actually tastes really good too. It kind of makes, right. It kind of takes all those negative things and puts it into a positive viewpoint, yeah. you know, if you envision and, um, then how we can actually do something so simple to help ourselves. And I, I'm, I'm so curious about all these other certifications you have, but we obviously don't have time to go into all of those today, maybe another time, but is there anything else that you would like to share with the listeners that, you know, related to, you know, mental health and well, actually, you know what, we should talk a little bit about your mastermind and how you, I would love to know how you created that and how you got people into the mastermind because you do tapping in the mastermind. Oh, yeah. And you talk about um, using tapping for those scarce, the scarcity mindset, money mindset challenges and things like that. So I would love to know, first of all, is your, my, is your mind mastermind all for entrepreneurs? Is it across like just anybody in the population that wants to attend it? But please tell the listeners a little bit about that and how you started that. Well, thank you, Robin. I appreciate that. Um, in the pandemic, I was talking with a friend and she said, Hey, I found this, uh, 40 day abundance, uh, journal prompting. Do you want to do them? I'm like, yeah, sure. Whatever. So we started doing daily journal prompts and, um, we had talked every day and we tapped every day just because, you know, we were friends. Well, in those 40 days and, and these journal prompts have a spiritual context to them. So 
for someone like you, that wouldn't be any issue. My friend who did it is was a devout uh, atheist. And so whenever mm. she got into something that was spiritual, she would change the word to universe or something that she felt comfortable with. What was surprising is that within 40 days, she doubled her sustainable monthly income. At the time, I was an employee and I'm like, where's abundance going to come from an employee, right? I mean, nobody's yeah. going to give me a bonus or something for working out of college. Um, but in those 40 days, Robin, I ended up receiving $10,000 unsolicited. Now, I'm sure for you, $10,000 is no big deal. But for me, it was huge. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like fabulous to get that chunk of money without even asking for it or thinking about it. So my friend and I were talking about it. I talked to other friends about it and they're like, oh yeah, I did it before and nothing ever came of it. So I talked to my friend. I said, what did we do differently that made it work? And what we came up with was we, um, first of all, we checked in with each other every day. That was one thing we uh, had, we set it up so that the emails were sent to us. So, you know, you didn't need the self-discipline to look and see, okay, what's the journal prompt for today and do it. The emails were sent automatically. Um, and the other thing was we tapped. So whenever we came up to a financial block, we would tap on that block to release it and then, and feel that energy shift as it sounds like you may have felt as well and allow the, the funds to be able to flow into it. So that was a year and a half ago. And since that time, I've had people that have been in every mastermind since. <laughs> they were mostly a 44 day mastermind. Um, it's really 40 days of journal prompts, but we had to add the extra days because we did Zoom once a week, right? Um, and then the group said, you know what? We really want an 88 day mastermind. I'm like, oh, great, 88 days. Uh, so I just can't duplicate. No, that's not going to work. So I pulled up one of my keynotes that I speak on, which is called Create Your Fate. And it talks about the eight different aspects of your life. So we go into, um, first of all, um, we identify which one of the eight aspects you want to work on in the next 90 days. It actually ends up being a little more than 88 days. And then we have experts come in talking about different things about how can you move forward in making friends? How can you move forward in your faith? How can you move forward in education? So what area of your life do you want to focus on during that period of time? So it's, it's been tons of fun. And I've had, actually had some people that have been in every mastermind and just love it. Oh my gosh. That is awesome. I love that you're helping women navigate these things because we really do, I think, hold ourselves back, especially when we don't have someone to inspire us and hold us accountable for taking action. So I love that. That's so super. Okay. So we have to wrap up the interview, but I know it's so sad, but will you please tell the listeners how they can connect with you, learn more from you, maybe even join your mastermind? Sure. Um, so my email is the word hello at drnall.com. So it's H-E-L-L-O at D-R-N-A-L-L.com. Um, they can reach me on my website. I'm a bit of a wordsmith. So my last name is Nall, N-A-L-L, followed by the word edge, E-D-G-E. CO.com. It's knowledgecompany.com. Um, and of course, I would love for your listeners to call me. Um, my phone number is 772-480-0541. If I can't pick it up, please leave a message. I will call you back. I'm preparing for my third TEDx talk uh, in January. So I'm blocking off periods of time just to try and figure out what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> Awesome. And your TED Talks, are they on your website or should people look on YouTube for those TED Talks? Yes, they're on both. They're, they're on YouTube. You can just do a search for TEDx Math Anxiety or TEDx My Name. They're on my website and they're also on my YouTube channel. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Katie, for being here. This was an absolute delight. Thank you so much. I so appreciate what you're doing. Listeners, if you enjoyed this episode, will you please do me a favor and Dr. Katie a favor and leave a rating and review? That is how more and more people will discover this message and the help that they may need to navigate those waffles that are thrown at them across the diner of life.